This is Josiah Plays, Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire. Alright, we're exploring the Queen's Birth District of Nekataka. And there's somebody standing here by this weird fire fountain. Of course. Whom we're about to speak to. Well met, stranger. Akira. But isn't this district a fine place? The Huana woman stares off into the distance with a longing expression. <clears throat> Let's turn to see what she's looking at. Why do I only have eight now? If I had nine the last time? He's not too far away, is he? She doesn't settle on any point of particular interest. Everything from the high buildings to the cobblestones is a subject of fascination. She notices your attention and turns her eyes to the ground. I am not one meant to venture far from the gullet. Until recently, I... I had a respectable job at the Luminous Bathhouse. Now that I am unemployed, I seek to make myself useful before the money runs out. And I must return to the Roparu as a pauper. He frowns and turns her gaze back up to you. You worked at the Luminous Bathhouse? A wonderful place. Would that I could cross its threshold again and feel the mist of luminous waters. Her smile is sad, if genuine. In spite of my time there, I cannot do else but give it my highest recommendation. You will find the Luminous Bathhouse in Periki's Overlook. How did you lose your job at the bathhouse? More happens at the bathhouse than cleanliness and ease. It is a place of meetings, business, and transactions, to all of which the attendants are either blind or deaf. One day, I overheard, more than I ought to have, in my airing, I gasped, to my great shame, I showed a most unprofessional reaction before clients. I was fired. And rightly so. That seems pretty rough. Getting fired just for gasping. Yeah, the buff of the party is probably worth more than the 10 morale on most occasions. I agree. She bows her head. What did you overhear in the bathhouse to cause such a scandal? Scandalous. Akema shakes her head and lowers it in deepest shame. She's trembling, and it's clear that, in her estimate, she has suffered enough without debasing herself even further. Tell me about the Queen's birth. The Queen granted this area of the city to the Valian outsiders. Here, they organized their business and trade, digging up the archipelago with both hands and carrying riches overseas. Glances toward the docks. Apologina seems poised to object, but then relaxes and nods. It is a fair characterization. In her welcoming embrace, the Queen allowed a similar concession to the Royal Deadfire Company. You would do well to see as much of Nekataka while you are here, I am thinking. I will. Thank you. Farewell. And this just leads us down here to the wild mare. This means the business is good. A Magronic Benediction. Neither let thy trials burden thee, for in thy suffering thou shalt be transformed. The ever-living flame will burn away thine impurities. Purification shall be thine. The fire of thy god shall be the vessel. She needed to, needed to Nox bluff that. 
Seek not to clash, search not for conflict. These will find all in turn. The fires of strife will consume thee, but fear not the battle, fear not the war. Embrace the strife, but turn thyself from the struggle. This is very confusing theology. <coughs> Keep thyself strong against those that would batter thee. Keep thy soul fortified against the trials that shall overtake thee. Fire, flame, the searing heat of Magran's fury. All these await the unfaithful, the weak, those that help not themselves. Take heart in thine own strength. Take comfort in thine own power. Take control of thine own path. Let the fire guide you. Let the fire transform you. Let the fire purify you. Let the fire consume you. Yeah, I guess. Magrin's kind of a weird god. Alright, so we know what that is. We know we can go in there. We've been all up in there. Yeah, I saw a spider, that's why I gasped. It's beyond me. Queen's birth is pleasant enough, but reeks of the docks. Be sure you make time to visit Serpent's Crown. It is the jewel of our city. Be on your way. So the south exit doesn't really lead us anywhere. We could leave city by foot. Ah, look out! What happens when all the Audra is dried up? A strange thought for him to have if he's freaking out about something. We're fighting and I don't even know what we're fighting. Ah, we've got some obnoxious little imps. Twenty-seven point six. I don't mean to imp O's on you, but... Am I on the slowest of modes? What's the rest of my party doing? Besides a big bunch of nothing? Oh, indeed. This is wrong, Watcher. So she is chanting the correct thing. Where'd these random amps just happen to come from? Tell me.
I've thought of a way to make it so that she will always chant the correct fucking chant. Make all the chants the correct chant. Now it doesn't matter which one she chants, we're covered. At once. Reprimand party. There's no need to improvise for this fight. Well, I like how most of the party stood around on the stairs. Welcome to Nekitaka. Thanks. More amps. Well, the top of that last tower was much improved. Look, it's the sea cow. Much improved. market for decent footwear you won't find any cat leather around in my shop some of us hold ourselves to a higher standard the merchant gestures for you to speak freely let me see what you have of course come take a look he's a cobbler have some drugs I've already got some boots of stealth. These thin leather sandals are commonly worn by the Huana Roparu as they tirelessly scour the coast for plants, sea creatures, and valuable detritus washed in by the tide. They provide grip and stability on the shifting sands. Stride and resolve, huh? I don't think I need to buy any sandals right now. I'm trying to save up. Ivor the Bright is here. Cause any trouble and you'll spend the rest of your sorry life down below. Alright, we're gonna talk to Nera Bardado. But first, we're gonna talk to Ivar the Bright. Nobody else of note down here, right? Gone shepherds us all, traveler. Seek out his temple along the sacred stair, that thy path shall be made clear. Ooh, a temple of gone. Gone shepherds us all, traveler. Okay, I get Seek it. He shepherds us. Fine. The sacred stair, that thy path shall be made clear. Get shepherded.
Madiko, where is that spoiled brat? A woman in fine clothes clutches a ledger in both hands. She searches the faces of passers-by, settling on yours with an uncertain frown. Are you all right? I'm trying to be the responsible one in the family, and it's a heavy burden. Laro is past due for a company meeting. Mother wants me to drag the elusive louse back by his ear. She tucks the book under her arm. Must be nice to be a layabout. Uncle Angbert would have tanned my hide. How the fuck is that pro athasian Adair points affably in approval. Fuck. I am angry and jealous in equal measure. You'd think this district was a maze, the way he manages to hide. She glances over your shoulder and sighs, then looks back at you with sudden recognition. Sarah Palagina, have you time to lend your hand? Fucking everybody knows Palagina! Nera's heels click together as she inclines her head in a polite bow. I always have time to help the great families of the Republics. Though I must admit this seems a bit pedestrian. If you only knew my brother, Sere. He goes not a day without causing trouble. How can I help? Could I persuade you to watch out for Laro? I'd pay generously for your trouble. I'm gonna study her hands. Nera has been digging her nails into her ledger, leaving crescent moon-shaped impressions in the binding. She notices your interest and holds the book protectively close. Hmm. I... I'm concerned, because Laro tends to feud with Orso, one of the local Valero rats. You aren't exactly tearing the district apart looking for him. Of course, see. I only manage the family business. She takes up her ledger with both hands, holding it like a shield. Better to ask why Laro isn't sprinting back to look after his birthright. What do you mean by Valera Rat? <laughs> the Valeras. A brood of sea vermin playing at nobility. She hefts her ledger as if to bring it down on a pest. Okay, she's at, 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 at fucking Durant's staff gripping levels here with this fucking ledger. We squabble and compete, but Laro, the pastinago, takes it too far. Literally the valiant term for carrot, but conversationally meaning idiot. Oh, that fucking carrot. I take it your mother is someone important. It's Ali Bardato. The Valiant Trading Company leans on her to finance their mission. If only more of her offspring were as accomplished. If I was clever, I could say something snotty here. Nero raises her free hand and squeezes the bridge of her nose. If I happen across Laro, I'll let you know. Would you? I'll be waiting at the estate in case he happens to return. Nera thumbs over her shoulder. Laro and his miscreant friends carouse at the tavern, the falls above the Adra Mill, and the southwestern bridge. I see. If you see him, Tell Laro to get his good-for-nothing ass back home. Well, we do have this thing with chasing the rogue god to the ends of Aora, but <laughs> I guess if it's on the way... Right, Adair? Of course, Mestra. Palagina's jaw flexes under a forced smile. Oh, I don't think she likes the noble families. Nera Baldato is worried that her younger brother, Laro, might be getting himself into trouble. Nera told me that her younger brother, Laro, missed an important... An important... Uh, missed an appointment. He is likely somewhere in Queen's birth. Nera wants him found and returned to the Baldato estate as soon as possible. Nera mentioned that Laro and his friends often carouse at the tavern, the southwestern bridge, and behind the district's waterfall. Alright. The Dark Magician. Did they like your trick at the palace? I like this little path of rocks right here, leading to this 
the state. Southwestern bridge is this thing. Presumishly. I don't think we're gonna find him here, but one must be thorough. Clothing stinks of seawater. Maybe he was the guy that was running from the imps. I don't think so, though. Whoever said a good pair of boots will last a lifetime never spent a year at sea. What'll it be today? Oh, right, well, he's not on the southwestern bridge. I bet he's not going to be at the fucking wild mare either, but we're going to go look for him there. They needed a better impetus for that one. I wonder if the imps have some kind of great ruler somewhere on a throne. They could call him the Emperor. Perhaps. Now, what can I do for you? Be seeing you. Here's Luca. Out, pesky fly! Shoo, shoo! Out, pesky fly! Shoo, shoo! Mado, my hunter! He's not here. Ado, you return. As he's hiding in the kitchen. Emperor would have an imperial court. Yes, of course he would. Impin ain't easy, you know. up in Alice. 
Sub Rabiuna. And of course, the room of this guy is empty because we took him on our ship. Have to carefully consider their imports and hex ports. Oh no, you didn't. like me much was it something I said I think it was something I said no it's not uh, you're not doing anything wrong exactly <laughs> really I mean you tell me if you had a problem right if I'd bothered you this whole time it's nothing personal I just don't think we need to be talking is all oh well thanks for clearing that up <laughs> Damn, Adair. It's a cold shot. Z see, Shodi likes Adair a lot. But... Adair doesn't give a shit about Shodi, though. Interesting that Seraphin doesn't like Aloth. Alright, so he must be up above the waterfall. Which at this time we have no idea how to get up to. Consider their imports and hex ports. Funny if we go in here and he's just at home. He's just in his room. She just didn't bother to check. Welcome to the Bardato Estate. You can find this alley in her study. They just let guests, random groups of well-armed people just wander in here, huh? Off the street? Please, don't touch any of the decorations. It is an honor to serve House Bardato. I like the light shine on the on the shiny floor. Damn those Valeras. Well, I better make sure that there's nobody in need of help down here in the vault. No dangerous traps that could hurt kids. He 
looks pretty serious. The guard captain takes his time moving to the barred door, his armor creaking with every step. He appraises you with a lazy sweep of the eyes, while his fingers curl casually about the hilt of his blade. Welcome to the Bardato Vault. You have an appointment, madam? Noxbluff! No, but you have an appointment with Bareth. <laughs> a vault? What's in here? The Bardatos are a banking family, Mestra. We hold a great many accounts belonging to our fellows within the Valiant Trading Company. We also safeguard those valuables they entrust to our keeping. A matter you may discuss with the lady. Upstairs. Captain makes a herding motion with his arms as he shepherds you toward the stairs. Well, fine then. I didn't want to go in your stupid vault anyway. This instrument appears to enjoy frequent use. It is impeccably tuned. These decorative plates are all stamped with the Bardato seal. I just hope Laro doesn't bring ridicule to the Bardato name. He probably will. These dour portraits seem to observe your movement up and down the corridor. of the hand of cult I'm not going to read all these histories of Adir and the Deerwood again they're long I've read them multiple times in the first game Hidden. Well, we need to it at least take a me. look. Finished. Okay. Not that exciting. I can get it to spill its secrets. There I gotta go. unlock this dangerous lock. Some kid could strain themselves trying to open that. You might visit. They have a priest. Look, every so, some of these tiles have a star in them. It's a nice detail. Sally Bardato. Wonder if she has a quest for me. Lady Zali Bardato. Custom dictates, I say, at your service. But I have not the time for such lies. <laughs> she regards you with a cool expression, but stands with a fighter's poise. Ado Palagina. My compliments to the Brotherhood. Zali inclines her head. Ado, Maestra. The Duke's bells wish you good health and good fortune. Bows her feathered head formally. 
If I can make your time in Queen's Birth more profitable, it would be my delight. Azale refocuses her attention on you. If you have business with House Bardato, then speak on. Azale opens her palms and waits. Time to notice some shit. Yeah, what? Aloth is too far away? Damn it, Aloth! Your attention is drawn to Izali's desk. Among the assorted ledgers and documents sits a brass seal still dripping with heated wax. The drippings have dried into an almond-shaped pattern which resembles the shape of an eye. An eye fringed with bird feathers. A nictitating membrane flicks across its surface in a barely perceptible wink. This like... Is this like a Helia thing? Are you still with me? Asali breaks your focus by waving her hand in front of your face. She glances between you and her tidy desk, frowning. Hamburglar. Your desk. The eye. She glances back at her desk again, this time with impatience. I ventured that you're working too hard. Your family seems very well established here. Ugh. My bank shoulders the cost of the Valiant Trading Company's operations in the Deadfire. It is said that no Valian may wipe themselves unless a Bardato signature approves it first. Okay, that's... Seems like a lot of extra effort. That's a lot of work. Having to do the approval paperwork for everybody wiping their ass. You have to sign this on toilet paper? Well, if that's true, we gotta stop shaking hands with them. <laughs> Dare. Cuts right to the heart of the matter. I'm certain you've touched worse, farmhand. Zali's mouth twitches just shy of a smirk. Farewell. Speak up. My business never sits still for long. Zali plants one hand on her hip and gestures for you to speak. Um, alright, I guess there's nothing for us to talk to her about right now. Are you sure you don't want me to inspect the vault for dangerous, dangerous, child-injuring locks and such? Adair whistles at the dog. My dog? Someone's coming! Well, I think we know where he is. What are these people doing? 
Against a backdrop of jeering youths, a young woman raises her arms with an air of practiced drama. Before her, two men stand across from each other, mirroring scowls. Are they dueling? You both attest that you have made all possible efforts to come to a peaceful... The woman trails off as you approach, and you find yourself the sudden target of the crowd's attention. One of the duelists reflectively... Reflexively holds his hand over his heart and bows to Palagina. A cozy, fair knight, if our appearance offends. Save your breath. I am a sworn brother of the Conxwellias, neither available for nor interested in your wooing. She gives Laro an annoyed sneer. Aloth liked that. Postenago. He doesn't know when to stop flirting. Orso turns his gaze towards you. We have business. What do you want? Aristocrat. I don't want any trouble. Ah, but you're a witness now. You can at least watch us bleed each other dry. Psst. Watch your words, Oaf. You want the Juana to know we're dueling? My bad so to the tribals. We should be free to settle matters on valiant terms. Orso glances in your direction with annoyance. Otso, a valiant term for the penis, in a pejorative sense. So there you have it. Small wonder the old empire collapsed in civil strife if this is the valiant way. He sneers. And how do your colonies fare, Adira? Orso narrows his eyes at Aloth. I suppose you have a good reason for this duel? This street thug called my family a warren of corrupt inbreds. But is there a dung heap in all the world that does not have a little Valera cousin scratching through it? Valera opens his arms wide and smiles to the milling crowd. That wolf he calls mother would have us live out our days polishing Bardato silver. I was like, 16? I don't have 16 in any skills. It's resolve. It's the first time I've seen Resolve come up in a dialogue. Damn, 18 might. Orso spits at the ground between them. I can bet. I can bluff. Is this slight worth one of your lives? Ak, this is but one chapter in a long anthology of Bardato arrogance. <laughs> arrogance? Per complanquenet, you should thank me for my patience. We have you surrounded. Does this have to be settled by death? Surely there are better alternatives. Nothing less than the total disgrace of the Valeras would satisfy me. Then you will die unfulfilled. Orso shakes his head and huffs. Would your families approve of this? My brother Martino would applaud if he knew. My sister would not approve in the slightest, but this is my duty all the same. Laro tips up his chin with an imperious smile.
I'm a watcher. Do you have any idea what I can do to you? Lara and Orso trade uneasy glances, their vitriol for each other momentarily set aside. A threat? Liveros? We are the sons of the wealthiest families in Deadfire. Keep talking, and I'll draw your soul into the great beyond. Mela! Scatter! Lara whistles to his attendants, and they break apart in a disorganized exodus from the scene. Shoni did not like that skullduggery. What? Where are you going, you stuffed shirt? I... Hey! Wait! Orso and his comrades scramble to follow suit. This isn't over, you coward! You can't hide behind your corrupt mother forever! Orso leaves the arena in a hurry. So, that didn't quite go the way I want it to. I'm gonna do that differently. Lady Izali Bardato. Ado Pal Adomes. If I can make if your time in Queen's with Earth House Mark profitable, then speak be on. my delight. Are you still with me? Well, I will endeavor to hold your interest in Ark. It is said uh, that's true. I'm certain you've Speak up. We gotta stop uh. shaking hands with him. <laughs> They really could use some loading screen art. Someone's coming. You both attack. A cold. Save your breath. Post it now. We have business. What do you want? Ah. My butt. Small one. And how do your colonies fare, Adiran? This street, that wolf he calls mother, would have. Ah. <laughs> Arrogance. Bear nothing. Then you will die unfulfilled. Anyone can kill. Fighting to first blood would be enough to prove who's the better man. Ah. Our country benefits little from the flowers of its great families cutting each other down in their prime. First blood should satisfy your honor. Thanks for jumping in there, Palagina. Aloth likes that. It's dutifulness. A pair of duelists eye each other warily. I was the one who suggested fisticuffs, but you were eager to cut me open. 
To first blood, then. Shall we resume? <clears throat> the duelists square off and tentatively circle each other. Stocky Orso moves with heavy strides while Lero takes precise, measured steps. Onlookers gather and press at the edges of the poorly defined arena. Their jeering lowers to expectant mutters. The duelist seconds bring forth their weapons. Apparently I don't have a blessing. Let's take the opportunity to study each of the opponents. You note the sweat on Laro's upper lip and the furrow of concentration cleaving Orso's brow. Find a better vantage point. Failure. You shoulder your way into the thick of the crowd, but the press of bodies halts your progress. Once the swords are delivered to their respective bearers, the seconds back away in melancholy silence. The duelists cross their swords and bow and salute. The tranquil moment ends with a burst of motion. Despite their difference in size, the duelists seem evenly matched. Orso doesn't settle on an established form, but he keeps pace with Lero's aggressive strikes. Look out! <laughs> Hamburglar. Orso and Laro trade fierce jabs, giving up any pretense of playing to the crowd. A hard downward thrust sends Laro's blade clattering to the ground. Orso hovers over Laro. A grin slowly taking form. He raises his blade and points it at his opponent's heart. This was supposed to be a fight to first blood, but mercy is the farthest thing from the minds of the combatants. Wait and observe. Oh shit. Lero takes up his fallen sword and plunges it into Orso's gut. A collective gasp rises from the audience as the large fighter falls to his knees and the other slowly rises to his feet. Well, that's not the best thing. Hell, he's dead. Lero wipes fresh blood from the back of his shaking hands. Lero, go find your sister so she knows you're alive. Ack, of course. I let Orso's poisonous insults waylay me again. I can't help but wonder if Nero was right. And our troubles are only beginning. Thoughtful, he signals his attendant to depart, sparing you only a glance. Okay, I'm gonna do something. I'm reloading again. Before I come up here... That is some victim blaming there. Killed the dude and is like, he tricked me into it! Yeah. I know, right? I trust you. I'm gonna go talk to the other family first. I might get like a I might like get like a Creaky's overlook, the gullet. I might get a quest from the other family too.
gone shepherds us all, traveler. Seek out his temple along the sacred stair, that thy path shall be made clear. Just checking to see if any of them... Rolls of fabric and garments of various materials are arranged here, from fine silks to spools of thick yarn. Need a fresh jacket of pants? Something more delicate? If you have a frame, I can fit cloth to it without fuss. The tailor eyeballs your shoulder width, doing some mental calculation. Let me see what you have. Take your time. I'll give you space to browse. What are those stupid looking hats? So many hats. Oh my god, the amount of hats. There's a tricorn. Sido would be so happy. So many capes. So many outfits. Plus four deflection cloak. Oh shit, son. And the Botterwin's cover cape. Botterin. An Orlan warrior from the Fisher Crane tribe served Air Glanfath with distinction during the War of the Black Trees. He was infamous among the encroaching soldiers of the Deerwood for his rapid darting raids, daring raids into the hearts of their outposts, primarily under the cover of darkness. Botterin's cloak, much like its former owner, is a practical thing. Dirt, moss, and blood have made the simple homespun garment into a mottled mosaic that seems to disappear among the rocks and trees. The frayed hem is silent, even when drawn over stone and dry leaves. With the Glanfothan defeat and the end of the war, Bodrin and his most loyal followers made their way to the Deadfire, where they plundered merchant ships for many years. This cloak is all the remains of the fabled leader. During night time, Aura grants all nearby allies opponents to stealth and resolve. Hmm. Okay, I want this though. There, he's up to 74. Be cloaked now. Because be cloaked is a word. Spend the rest of your sorry life down below. Okay, I don't see any random Valerans standing around out in the street, so. 
Let's go into their house. There could be some dangerously locked chests in here. Who knows? Ship hunter. Half the bad dato guards are on the take. Making money hand over fist over there. Go on, you. I don't get paid enough to chat. But you're just leaning on a wall. Go find Master Otero upstairs. He's got a nice dog. It's a wolf, I, I guess. We're full up, I'm afraid. If you're looking for lodging, we'll have to hope there's room at the tavern. The family scribe offers you a pleasant smile, but seems preoccupied by other matters. You rent rooms? We do indeed. Forgive me if I mistook you for a tenant. There are quarters set aside upstairs. Passers by with a bit of extra coin will find a welcome cot and a meal. This is a temporary measure, of course. Clears her throat and glances away. Why rent rooms at all, much less for short-term stays? It's not my place to share the dealings of the Valera family, but this is all rather public. She frowns and glances around the house self-consciously. Suffice it to say that a family in want of coin might find alternate means of securing their finances. In the case of this estate, that means renting the occasional room. No shame in making a practical sacrifice. But I've said enough. Speak with Otello if you have business with the Valera household. He beckons you on in an anxious, urgent manner. Well, how's business going? Well, as they say, business can always be better, yes? I'm sure I needn't bore you with the details. The scribe bites her lower lip and diverts her gaze. So the family's on hard times. Who's in charge here? You'll find Atello Valera upstairs in his study. Goodbye. Adieu. True stories from the living lands. Read this. I shall make it so. I've read this. I remember this one from the first game. I can get it to spare we are. As you like. Cannon shot. The ticking of the clock fills the dining room in quieter moments. It shall open to me. Finished. Just keep a random ruby in here. Animancy in the modern age. Read it.
can't actually click on that. We've got a boat rug. That's the side exit from their house. Dangerously locked. For the children. Ruby eyed clock. Oh god. <laughs> Another examine thingy that pops up. Complicated. These pots appear to have been made locally. Nagataka is too small for the Valeras and the Bardatos. It's pretty big, though. A cousin of mine is a Bardato guard, doing well for himself. We'll come back to that room. Dangerous. Who will look out for the children? This vanity seems seldom used, apart from the wash basin. A fine layer of dust has settled on the surrounding tins and jars. It shall open to me. Ah, this is the people they're renting beds to. This city has so many stairs, sometimes you have to rest your feet. Poor Italo's bought up all the old finery he could, as if we can't tell. These people can't even afford locks for their chests. They're a rowdy bunch, our hosts. Or they understand the plight of the children and they leave their things unlocked on purpose. Which I can respect. I fear not. Martino's been more prickly than usual. Hey, don't tell him I said so. I shall make it speak. Otello Valera has carefully etched his signature into the glass housing this model. It's a ship in a bottle. I can get it to spill its secrets. There we are. As you like. Man, these people lock oh Atello, I do not write on behalf of the other captains of your illustrious fleet, but I hope that you understand my voice is still theirs, even if they are too proud to air a grievance. You and I have known each other too long to hide our thoughts from one another. I know that money is tight and that you cannot spend what you do have, what you do not have. But the royal deadfire incursion and the boldness of the Principi have not made the waters between the Republics and deadfire any calmer. Our ships are battered and bruised, nearly unrecognizable as they are patched with the flotsam of our defeated foes. We make do with what little we have, but this is an exhausting and hopeless way of life. 
Send us the coin to make formal repairs, or else we will abandon ship, and the next vessel I captain will not bear our family's sigil. Please, brother. Captain Baravas. They're having some troubles. Some troubles. Ah, a new face in the Valera holds. Otello Valera's face is lined and weary, but his coat is tidily buttoned, his posture faultless. This place looks pretty shabby. Sekiruna at your service. Courtly manners are welcome here. He inclines his head. My time is not inexhaustible, but I am willing to spare it. He opens his palms and invites you to continue. What can I do for you? What does your family do for the Valian Trading Company? Valera ships escort goods and merchants from island to island across Deadfire. The Principi dogs show us their stern whenever they spot Valera colors on the horizon. Okay, farewell. A new face to the Valera halls. And aren't we all so excited to see you? Martino Valera grins from ear to ear. I always make time for chatter. Say what you will. What do you bring to the Valera household? Is drama an acceptable answer? His grin widens. In other words, they back that aft up. Yeah, they do, Knox. He brings drama. I make sure the wine cellar is stocked. And that sons and daughters alike know how to carry a blade. Very well. Very well. So no quests here at this time. Which is fine. Thought just having a friend couldn't be no crime. Okay, so we're not going to get a quest from the other family like, Hey, go find our son. He's gone. We don't know where he is. So let's just go up there. Let's see what we can do about this duel. I heard you and Isselmir again. I do wish you would stop encouraging her. Real sorry, Aloth. We'll keep it down. You think I care about your childish jokes? What bothers me is how she doggy is my grimoire. And you keep bringing her out. Just looking to lighten the mood, I guess. <laughs> Stop talking to my alternate personality, bro. I don't appreciate that shit. You both are hey, go save your all all this. We have business. What do you want? Ah, it's my bad small one. And how do your colonies fare, Adira? Mera, what say you? We are civil enough to kill each other without making an incident out of it. Oh, here's a new option because I'm a mystic mystic with the mystic voice. Death rarely solves problems. Just creates new ones. Who invited the philosopher? Mystic, thank you. Psst, not I. 
I suppose you have good reason for this deal. This street th that wolf he calls mother would have hack. <laughs> Arrogance. Bear come nothing less then you will die unfold. Ah. I was the one to first the blood. Let's try... Let's try this this time. Shout at the top of your lungs. Stop! Orso hovers over Laro, a grin slowly taking form. He raises his blade and points it at his opponent's heart. This was supposed to be a fight to first blood, but mercy is the farthest thing from the minds of the combatants. Orso's killing stab goes wildly askew, missing his opponent's heart and instead carving a long slice along Laro's cheek. Alright, so at least they both lived this time. Arg! <laughs> Laro falls to his knees, clutching at his face. Not so pretty anymore, Posterago. Orso wears an accomplished grin. Laro, go find your sister so she knows you're alive. This does not end here, Valera dog! Laro wipes away a line of blood and casts it to the ground. Just make sure the other Bardatos learn from your example. Orso nods and signals for his attendant to depart. Queen's Birth District in the city of Nekataka is home to several Valian families. Two of the most prominent houses, Bardato and Valera, appear to be in the midst of an escalating feud. Considering the importance of these families, I'm sure the Valian Trading Company is invested in bringing the dispute to a close. It may be worth looking into just why these two houses are pitted against each other. Both families have estates here in Queen's Birth. Speaking with their respective heads should make the source of antagonism clearer. I found Laro engaged in a duel with Orso Valera. This falls squarely under the category of what Nero would call trouble. I could find a way to break up the scene or at least get the fight over with. Orso Valera has emerged the victor in this duel and Lero Bardato's face is a little less pretty for it. No one was killed, and both parties seem satisfied. All in a day's work. Alright. So that's done. Try Mystic. Yeah. My character doesn't even have to try to be mystical. One second.
Okay, hello? Hello, can I be heard? I think I can be heard. How's it going? How we doing? What's going on? Alright. Let's go into the old estate here. life my face still hurts but not as badly as a sword through the gut my face still hurts but not as badly as a sword through the gut laro has returned to the estate intact belfetto nara loosens her grip on her ledger too much bardato blood has been spilled in the name of vengiata a valiant term for vengeance I get the feeling there's still some unfinished business. Fuck. Nothing has been solved. Only delayed. Here. For your discretion. Passes you a pouch of coins and adds a short mark to her ledger before snapping it shut. There can be no peace while civilized kith turn on each other. Turns her gaze away in thoughtful silence. Right. My face still hurts, but not as badly as like a this. sword through the gut. I'm going to investigate some shit with Azali. What's up, weird eye book desk lady? Would that scandal and bloodshed kept their distance from my house? Azali glances up from her work and sighs. You saw my son dueling with the Valera boy. At least he survives to learn from his mistakes. Those who ate my blood profit by it. Ooh, so I basically got a total of 1,800 copper for that. It's pretty good. Zavi produces a purse from her desk drawer and tosses it in your direction. When Valera and Bardato cross each other, only blood and sorrow remain. Azali sighs, her gaze turning away. Do you see your families ever making peace? Perhaps in time, if Great Wardica judges us worthy of supporting the company. Word has spread fast about the little spectacle at the docks. You've certainly caught everyone's attention. Perhaps the Watcher of Cadnua and House Bardato can help one another. What is it you want? Queen's Beth whispers of a Valera plot against my family. Something grander than pointless jewels. You are a newcomer to the Deadfire, uniquely positioned to loosen Valera tongues. She taps her chin and regards you thoughtfully. Zilli Valera strums a lute by the watchtowers. A meek-tempered boy. Fonder of song and drink than the family business. He might spill something of his family's affairs. Strums a lute? We got us a spoony. So somebody's with bardsmanship. Wouldn't the governor take an interest in this treachery? The governor is interested in how much luminous Adra we can export. Nothing else matters. To that end, I look forward to the day when we won't need Valera thugs backing our interests. What if there is no plot against the Bardados? Then I will sleep better at night. As Ollie shrugs, her brow furrowed. My hopes do not hinge on being proven right at every turn. I'll go and see what I can get out of Zili Valera. Try not to alert the Valeras of our knowledge. 
That is the point of involving an outside agent. Why are the Bardados and Valera feuding? Because we do not belong in the same business. The Valeras are opportunists reaping the rewards of happenstance. They're little better than the pirates they're charged with slaying. Palagina cocks her feathered head at Azali's words, but does not respond. I'm about to feud with the Valera family. Fratello doesn't make my affairs any easier with his wayward ambitions. Azali motions for you to continue. Would you be willing to speak with the Tello? Oh dear. <laughs> You're serious, aren't you? She stifles a chuckle. You think I'd put myself in pistol range of that old imp? Your son was nearly killed. Isn't that reason enough to put an end to this? Azali splays her fingers atop her desk and takes a deep breath. Certainly. But not the end you suggest. Maybe I could speak with him on your behalf. Convince him to see reason. I suppose it's not your honor, I doubt. I have little objection to discussing the matter. I simply doubt Otello will listen. Speak up. My business never sits still for long. Azali plants one hand on her hip and gestures for you to Otello speak. Otello doesn't make my affairs any easier with his wayward ambitions. It seems like a waste of your resources. Doesn't it? This is no surprise to me. Her eyebrows raise. Fortunately, Atello has fewer resources to expend than I do. I had other More questions. More pleasant subjects, I hope. Farewell. Alright. Azali Bardato has asked me to find information regarding a possible Valera plot. I'm on the lookout for Zili Valera. I've decided to try and mediate peace talks between the two families. Well, the first step is to talk to the head of each family and convince them to meet. Zali Bardado is convinced that the Valeria family is planning to make a move against her. She asked me to seek out information regarding a Valera plot against her. She suggested I start with Zili, a more easygoing member of the Valera family. Azali said that Zili Valera plays his loot around one of the local watchtowers. Alright, time to go talk to the other family head. A moment of your time, Watcher. Oh. The Bardatos and Valeras may be at each other's throats, but both are vital to the company's strategy in the Deadfire. The Bardatos are not on the company's board, but they are major investors in company operations. The Valeras keep pirates from sacking our ships. The company will tolerate some level of mischief and bloodshed, even murder between them. But not burning one family to the waterline. I will not tolerate it either. Is that clear? I'll do my best to keep the peace. Good. It may come to violence, but use restraint. A little spilled blood may cool passions on both sides. But it has a greater chance of inflaming them. I'm trying to avoid as much violence as possible. Don't even trip, Palagine. Palagizzle. Wait, maybe... Can I talk to them again? Probably not, but let's find out. Our family can't go on like this. My face still hurts, but not as badly as a sword through the gut. I'll solve this. You think a Romeo and Juliet situation might develop? Possible. Do 
You're looking prettier than when you left or so. Merla, cut it out. The sea cow is an interesting vessel. Or so. Taught Laro a lesson I did. Taught Laro a lesson I did. Or so you say. Tello and Martino. I enjoy newcomers who make a name for themselves. Care to ingratiate yourself to the family? Tino raises his eyebrow. Depends on what you need. Hunting principi dogs is our business. With all these problems with the Baldatos, now is not the time for competition from the Brass Citadel. It would be better if they took their business elsewhere. When Otello isn't looking, Martino draws his thumb across his throat. Competition from the Rawatayans. I'll talk to these sailors for you. Parfito, I am sure the words of the Great Watcher will save the day. Perfect. Martino punctuates his sing-song mockery with an exaggerated sigh. Make sure those royal bastards understand the Queen's birth is Valera territory. Martino Valera has asked me to get rid of some troublemakers by the local tavern as a means of proving myself. He'd rather they were dealt with permanently, but it's entirely up to me. Martino wants a few Rawatayan sailors expelled from the vicinity of the Queen's Birth Tavern. Martino wants a group of Royal Deadfire Company sailors ousted from the Wild Mare in Queen's Birth. He seemed to favor a permanent solution. Martino mentioned that the sailors were singing outside of the Wild Mare. So everybody I'm tracking down at this point is some kind of spoon. My time is free to give him. What would you do with it? Ado, I hear you witnessed an unfortunate exchange behind the Adra Mill. Otello aims a troubled look at Martino. You kept Lara and Orso from the beyond. We could use such a mediator. What can I do for you? You're having some kind of trouble with the family next door. Ach, the Bardato Bank shuts us out of investments and stifles our finances. This is the richest prospect on Yora. But we cannot grow our family business. Can't make coin at the expense of others? Now that's a crying shame. Ha! <laughs> Shorty. She gets a little icon saying, you know, Sacarina approves. <laughs> Eyes narrowed. The priestess crosses her arms over her chest. If you know a better way of squeezing profit out of these islands, I'm open to hearing it. Instead of Star Search, it's Spoonie Search. That's right, Nox. Oh man, Star Search. That's some old school shit right there. Ezali's a rich thug. And someday she will get what's coming to her. It's funny, she calls your family thugs. I want to talk to you about the Bardatos. If we must. What is it? Frowning, Atello beckons you to continue. 
I had other questions. Certainly. What is it? Farewell. Before we try to negotiate any deals between them, I want to I want to handle both of their quests. See what other information I gain and then come back and speak to them. Alien Trading Company is at a one. Nekataka is its own thing, apparently. And the Principi, and the Deadfire Company, and the Valians, and the Huana. Port Maje. There's probably one that goes here. Delver's Row, there's probably one that goes here. The gullet, there's probably one that goes here. Children of the Dawn Stars. Said Spoony Search. Something about the watchtowers. So he's down. So we've got some. We've got some. Rawatayan sailors by the wild mare, or in the wild mare, perhaps. Singing outside of the wild mare. So let's find these characters and send them on their way. Green man will not come here, yes? I don't... No? These two don't appear to be singing. Sing as anything but the Naga's nethers, won't you? The fuck said that? I think I found the group Martina was talking about, carousing on the balcony of the Wild Mare. Now I just have to get them to clear out. Ah, they're up there. is here. Royal Swordsman. Royal Weatherman. Okay, this looks like a little more serious situation than just some casual fucking sailors. Ah, at once. They've got a weather mage? Yeah.
Next time I'm going to the bathhouse. These little bureaucrats can't hold their land or their drink. Hopefully we can solve this peacefully. Defiance Bay, am I right? Good shrimp. The sizable Amawa smiles and claps you on the shoulder. Hard. Wait, have we met this guy before? Who are you again? I was but a face in the crowd. But I remember the one who walked out of Hadred House alive. Hmm. When everyone was slaughtered there. Claps you on the shoulder again, harder, and this time you recognize inebriation behind his enthusiasm. He's had more than a few. Perhaps we should go before this ends in rambling professions of love. He leans close to you, speaking low. I must be seeing double elf man, because it's like there's a great big... lady crouching on your shoulders. The sailor squints at Aloth and shrugs. Wait, is he some kind of watcher? How is he seeing Isomir? Aloth presses his lips together and, for a few seconds, looks as if he's struggling against Isomir. So, what brings you here, friend? What are you doing? Captain gave us extra coin to occupy ourselves while we're on leave. We've been draining Valian wine cellars and trying to remember the words of Rawatai anthems. <laughs> Loudly, as often as not. He turns to his compatriots with unrestrained glee. Martina Valera wants you out of Queen's birth. Valera? One of the stuck-up pirate hunters. We move for no one, friend. His expression darkens and his hands drop to his sides. I'll dump you in the cat canal. Time to stamp out a sea rat. Anything I can say or do to convince you to leave? We'll leave when we're good and ready. Valera should get used to waiting. I don't know what to do here. I thought maybe I could just convince them with some diplomacy or something. Well, guess it's time to stamp out a sea rat. Sea rat. Born survivors. The sailor motions for his companions to rally around him. Oh, he's a monk. Thirty-seven, seventy-nine, seventy-nine, fifty-nine. Dominated. And only grazed, so it's not going to dominate him for that long. Blessing, holy power. What's wrong with me? I'm immobilized. I'm in a binding web. All right. Oh, 
Pelagina just rolled over there and 65 pieced this mage in the face. Well, the soldiers have been dealt with. Martina will be waiting for me back at the Valera estate. Yeah. Oh, tie clothing, weather mage grimoire. It's full of weathery things. That's pretty awesome. I like the, like, themed grimoires. Ring of the Marksman? Rings such as this are favored by archers and gunfighters for the great advantage they offer in ranged combat. This small, claw-shaped piece of jewelry contains a charm that heightens the coordination between hand and eye, improving one's aim. Many marksmen claim that particularly potent rings know the perfect instant to loose an arrow or squeeze a trigger, and will do so of their own accord. Okay, that is rad. And I just happen to use a bow. Alright, I'm gonna get rid of the Ring of Unshackling. The Ring of Unshackling will go to her. That will do nicely. Palachina destroys everyone and then complains about the bloodshed, right? Dude, she hit that fool for 65. Ahala hit that swordsman for 72 with necrotic lance. Holy crap! How may I help? That penetration 10 is what makes it so strong. Of course. Work at the mill or go to sea? Which is better? See? Alright, so before we go back to Martino. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Before we go back to Martino. Let's go find this little spoony loot player on the guard tower. Follow the sound of bardsmanship. Well, he's not on this one. I love the architecture in this city, it's so cool. Really? Where is he? What watchtowers are they talking about? Watchtowers. Uh, 
Unless he's like literally in a whole different zone. I'm listening for the sound of someone- oh, there he is. Oh no, that's a guard. I'm listening for the sound of someone who has deeply wasted Akai discipline. <laughs> oh, there he is. Okay, good. One second. Okay. Can I be heard? <clears throat> Look at him with his loot. Oh, Zeely. This young man appears either to be composing or practicing a tune on his loot. He stops mid-strum, looking up at you with a friendly expression. Ah, apologies, lady. If I intrude upon your peace, inspiration eludes me still. If you are after some scenery, I suggest the far end of the bridge. It smells better when the wind blows in from the sea, of course. Hmm. Ha! She's like, we don't want him to know you're from our family. You just come right out and be like... Or I can be Hamburglar. I have some questions for you. Oh, sure. What about? Your family's been having some trouble with the Bardados, right? Guess that means you've spent at least an hour or two in town. Zilu sighs. You've never sought revenge? Not like Martino does, no. My uncle works hard to prove we're not thieves or murderers. Tell him that his music is polluting the air? <laughs> oh, Knox. I fear that Persa is going to ruin that for us. She's in the thick of something too big for her. This guy wasn't exactly a tough nut to crack. Persa? I caught cousin Persa running her mouth off about the job Belda got her involved in. This guy's running his mouth right now. Persa's been spending time in the gullet. In the tavern down there. Maybe she could tell you more. Sorry. I guess you got a mouthful, huh? I really ought to get back to my loot. Just don't hurt Perser, okay? I won't hurt Persa, but I can't guarantee the Palagina won't chop her the fucking half. And then be like, let's not be too violent. Zili's pointed me toward his cousin. Zili's pointed me toward his cousin, Persa, who frequents a tavern known as The Hole down in the gullet. I've been to The Hole. It's an aptly named place. Way down in the hole. Way down in the hole. I'm going to explore the rest of this district before we go off half-cocked looking for the hole. This is the guy that sold the cloaks and shit, right? Yeah, we, we've dealt with him. There's a fine looking ship. What's it called? The Sea Cow.
we've already explored this whole dock and everything, right? Auto Watcher. That's my ship itself. What's this little area? This place has a fuck ton of guards. Like, a fuck ton of guards. If I did cause any trouble here, I have a feeling I would be reduced to a thin red paste. Well... Let's check this place for dangerously locked chests for the children. Someone in here might need our help. There's a f oh, a forsaken dog. It shall open to me. It's done. I shall make it. As you like. Okay, they don't, they don't care about this stuff, though. Well, don't forsake a dog. We got Zopanawa. Gives you insight and metaphysics. Well, Zopnawa is following you around. You gain a bonus to insight and metaphysics. Your entire party also gains a bonus to will. Hmm. Inside of seven now. And a will of eighty four. Must be really crazy to sneak in here without a flag. Wait, what? Gina, how is it nothing about what the gods are up to seems to phase you? When you think the worst of them, the worst they can do comes as little surprise. Don't you at least want to hear what Aethys has to say? Only a fool would trust what he had to say. Whatever he said would be just another lie. I I'm not saying it wouldn't, just looking for... I don't know. Halogina not going for it. 
Oh, we got some kind of show going on here. With fireworks. Please, madam. A coin. The child moves closer and tugs at the hem of your garments. A small movement draws your eye, and you notice the urchin's hand slipping into your coin purse. Not enough sleight of hand. Stay out of trouble. Hey, thanks. The coin vanishes up the urchin's sleeve. The urchin bows and scurries away. It's Spark! Want to join the performance, do you? Bear a coin. Passerbys have etched a varied selection of raunchy poetry and crude drawings into the brickwork here. How scandalous! Street magicians, they're really quite good. They're really quite good. What strange, pretty music. more going on than meets the eye here. I say. More than meets the eye. That's close enough. The young girl narrows her eyes and reaches for a dagger tucked into her back pocket. Her cheeks are sallow and she licks the edges of her dried lips. Even if she had eaten this week, you doubt she'd be in fighting shape. Here's an egg. You look like you could use this. Agrasima. Takes the egg in both hands and gently nestles it into a pouch. That'll staunch my pains for an evening at least. What's a kid like you doing on the streets of Nekataka? Nasenale. I've never had a roof over my head longer than an evening. She cocks an eyebrow at you. Nosy person. I guess cutting me loose was cheaper on my parents than a passage back to the republics. Or a few bites of bitter squash. Farewell. Apreta, what do you want? A valiant plea to make haste. She sniffs and eases back. Then there's Juanica. Well met, stranger. If you feel like investing in protection, I'd be willing to trade iron for copper. Ah, oh, she's an armorer. She presents you with a friendly smile. Let me see what you have. Lots to see. Take your time. He nods. Oh my goodness. She's got a bunch of Shia. Cacophony! to 9,000. She's got a very fancy helmet, a very expensive and fancy helmet called Heaven's Cacophony. This crested helmet pays tribute to the goddess Helia, the Sky Mother. Its plumed coxcomb made of feathers taken from a willing avian godlike make for a dashing, daring display. We could make a helmet like this with Palagina. The steel is etched with glyphs simultaneously representing lightning, the sky, birds, and swift travels. It gives you intellect, gives you religion, gives you shout of hosts, twice per rest, it's a cone, does damage and push, and stuns. It's 
pretty nice. And it lets you do an avenging storm once per rest. It's extremely loud. Any target they strike with a weapon or who strikes them is attacked by a bolt of lightning. Huh. Well, that's not a bad helmet. I mean, I'm not going to be buying it anytime soon. But then there's Horns of the Bleak Mother, another helmet. No one knows for certain the true nature of the being known as the Bleak Mother. Some say she is the progenitor of a hundred hundred young, terrible creatures that stalk in wild places best left forgotten, preying on kith and beast. Others maintain her domain is that of thorns and tangled roots, and that her children ensnare and devour those who wander off the path. Real or imagined, the mother is only talked about in whispers by those who trek darkened woods and brave the untamed wilderness. The fellow who wore this horned helm, however, spoke in boast. He claimed to have met the dreadful mother and slain her. These horns, he said, were proof of his deed. A pair of hunters would later discover the helmet in the heart of the Blackwood, its owner nowhere to be seen. Gives you perception and resistance to resolve afflictions, and plus 10 accuracy against beasts. Hmm. I mean, it's cheap. It's only 800. So, it's probably worth buying for somebody on my team. But, not right now. Gate Crashers. I think these were in the first game. These heavy gauntlets easily outweigh any similar pair of plated gloves. The scalloped knuckles are lined with lead, and the steel wrist guards are many times thicker than they ought to be for any practical purpose. Wearing them is like turning one's hands into bludgeons. Swinging them is a task unto itself, as if stopping them in motion is nigh impossible. That's pretty nice. Two might and 50% chance to knock down when you crit in melee, and it's got reeling blow twice per rest. It's a cone, a conal stun. And knockback. Those are pretty nice, but I'm not going to be buying those anytime soon. A fine large shield. Doesn't seem any different. This has a deflection of 12. This has a deflection of 12. It must not be counting this in that. Well, for plus one point of deflection, doesn't seem worth spending a thousand on it. So she doesn't have anything that I'd like to purchase at this time. I may come back. Horns of the Bleak Mother isn't bad, a helmet with some perception and some resistance. Accuracy against beasts is rather situational, but, you know. It's not nothing. How's that for street magic, motherfuckers? Just saying. I could do a street magic show, too.
Street magic, street, street, street magic. Broken bottles litter the cobblestones of this narrow street. The air is thick with the reek of dog scat. Ew. Here's some dicers. Seems you're always going up or down stairs in Nekotaka. Situation over here looks kind of dicey. I'll just count myself to some of this. Okay, this is a dead end. What's up, Jen? How you doing? What's going on with you? How it goes? Pretty good, pretty good. How's the new job? Not as easy as it seemed to turn a profit in Nekitaka, but there is opportunity. Look at all these people. The archipelago is full of new faces, I say. This is a weird place for that to be. A Valian Trading Company calls Queen's Birth at home. Here's Osa. Got home from family events? Family events! I got family events tomorrow. For Mother's Day. Drunken family things, now bored, hoping you guys will distract me from texting people I shouldn't text. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Care for a fish or two, stranger? Today's catch ripped straight from the hands of the solely winch. The fish. Oh god, Knox, we found the fishmonger. Nasty ass fish for sale! The fishmonger likes out an accomplished sigh. No fishmonger will ever be the same after that game. Let me see what you have. You'll find no fresher. Have a look. All of the nasty ass fish. Oh, she's got like unlimited hagfish and silverfin and tahiwa snapper. Some roe. Row, row, row your belt gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Alright, I don't think we need to buy any fish at this time. How many hours have you been playing this now? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, let's find out. Quick save. Load game. Looks like we're working with 42 hours and 45 minutes. Not counting like the three hours I spent. The four hours I spent doing like, doing like character creation and pre-event, pre-game, save game state creation. Oh, what do you mean like overall solid? Like how many hours have I been playing today?
Four hours for CC is totally fair. It is. I mean, you can't rush these things. Today I've been playing for almost five hours. There are riches to be made on more distant shores than these. Amid the barrels and boxes are crates stamped with the symbol of the Royal Deadfire Company. Welcome! Venturing out past the city. You'll want supplies, crab traps or the like for a larger game, I warrant. That is not the kind of voice I would expect with this face. The merchant sizes you up and nods. Oh, 40 is solid, yeah. I haven't even scratched the fucking surface either. Let me see what you have. Of course. Take your time. Oh, I always take my time. Alright, so she has some random junk. Ungents and spices and salt pelts. A trap I don't want. I, what is she's just like hunting in sundries, apparently. This looks like a sundry. What's a clay grub figurine? This small sculpture is made of unfired clay and is noticeably cracked in several places. It is a strikingly lifelike representation of a grub and succeeds at being as revolting as its subject matter. Oh, I could get this and I, once a day I could summon some cave grublings. Nah, I think I'm good. Thanks. Hey, free foods. See what's over here. Back alley, dockside arms and armor, fine fashion. Osa's famous fish. I mean, that little fishmonger with the nasty ass fish sitting there actually gets a map marker and it's called Osha's famous fish. Famous! A good shanty helps to pass the time at sea. Somebody named Zamar over here. Zamar? A strong musky animal smell clings to this straw bedding. Redora so. must think I work for free. We've met Redora. Ah, oh, this is the shipyard. Right, there's this big ramp here so that they can like build a ship and like send the ship down into the water. Or repair a ship or whatever. See Zamar if you need repairs. Apparently. These people really want me to know who to see about repairs. These ships look like they, they scrape through a battle. Who do I see about repairs, sir? Could use some time to myself at the mayor. Can you afford the mayor? They seem like scrublings. Really, Nox? I don't have any new bestiary entries, do I, that I haven't read? I read about bats, beetles, boars, worms, drakes, worms, drakes. I read about... Dogs? I didn't read about dogs. Guard dog, level 3, beast. When did I kill guard dogs? Oh, when I was at the pirate place. Let us read the lore of dogs. Dogs have been selectively bred over thousands of years to distill their beneficial behaviors, abilities, and attributes into the animal that exists today. In addition to being kept as able, dedicated companions, they are also used by kith to aid in hunting, herding, and protection. They are ubiquitous across the cultures of Aora. Stories abound of dogs so loyal they will stay with their masters even after death eventually expiring themselves. Local legend in the Deadfire Archipelago tells of a dog called Pasuke, whose dedication to his master is said to have been such that he still guards his master's corpse to this day, 115 years after his death. Undead dogs. We've read about panthers, 
We've read about imps and sporlings. We've read about will-o'-wisps and... I don't think we've read about blights, actually. We've read about phantoms. We've read about constructs and skeletons. We didn't read about trolls, either. We've read about Zorops. Sea Troll. Minus four reflex. So we know what kind of spells to use against a troll. They got no reflex. They got a grip of armor, though. Constricting seaweed. These gangly giants stand twice the height of average humans. Their bodies are covered in large fungal growths that leak smell foul-smelling pus-like fluid. Ew, so they're just like walking sligan monsters. Their oversized hands and feet extend to giant claws capable of rending a kith in two. Dozens of slimy tendrils hang loosely from atop their oversized heads, and their vast maws are filled with jagged, razor-sharp teeth. They have never been observed to use weapons, tools, or clothing, likely because they do not need them. Looking at a troll, it can be difficult to tell whether they've evolved in harmony with lichen, moss, and fungi, or whether they've been overtaken by them. A troll's naturally clammy flesh provides the ideal growing environment for these plants. They provide camouflage as well as some protection from the elements, and the enzymes they produce also offer limited sustenance for trolls in lean times. Because of their symbiosis with these plants, trolls generally dwell in heavily wooded areas, although some may occasionally be seen in damp underground environments that also house an abundance of lichen and fungi. Sligan Monsters Blights. Sand blights. These amorphous clouds roil and swirl with violent energies. Within the maelstrom, dozens of humanoid shapes materialize and vanish within an instant. Faces scream in silent agony while hands desperately clutch and claw at the air around them. Wow, that sounds really sort of depressing. Kind of feel bad for blights. Beowicks, known as spirit winds, often create blights. If souls are ripped free of their bodies and caught in the center of their storm, they may stick together and become bonded with available elemental substances in the maelstrom. They are beings of pure chaos and confusion, and destroying them is considered a mercy to the souls trapped within. Experimenting with blight creation is yet another questionable activity that has earned animancers a bad reputation in many circles. Some see it as dangerous and inhumane, others as a means to an end. The creation of blights is an accusation many fearful kith level at animancers. Yeah, making clouds of desperate, confused, screaming spirits does not seem like a good thing to do. Alright. Zamar? I hear you're the guy to see for repairs. Be with you in just a... <sighs> Almost had it. Damn your eyes. The sun-scarred dwarf gingerly picks at a splinter in his thumb, muttering. Uh, hazard of the work, really. He gives up with a frustrated grunt, shaking his hand. Came in on the sloop? I can hammer your ship together if you're apt to pay me for it. Zamor bears his teeth and grinds them hard enough to sound over the noise of the dock. I'd like to see your goods. Oh, come take a look. He steps aside to show you the contents of his crates. Alright, so he sells ships. Wait, he has these giant ships in his crates? I'd like to know more about how this works. Nah, this is just the, uh, this is the port shop, I think. With all the different sails, and hulls, supplies that you need, but we're maxed out on all of our ship supplies. He's got some rice. He's got cannons.
They're like a ship in a bottle, except it's a ship in a crate. <laughs> I guess it's like that, yeah. Except it, it, and then it goes in the water and it grows to full size. Tear and hull treatment. That only costs a thousand. I wonder... Some of these cannons are actually weirdly cheap. What are the best ones? To me, I think best pretty much means short reload time, but also good damage, and also good range. <laughs> so everything good, is what I mean. I should get some better cannons. My dear wooden hog noses are kind of a shit. 4 to 7, 4 to 7, but longer range. 6 to 9, longer range. 6 to 9. Now the reload time is getting stupid, though. I think reload time of four turns sounds pretty good. Let's see, you fire them, you spend the next turn jibing, you spend the next turn holding, you spend the next turn shooting the other side's cannons, you spend the next term jibing. You spend the next term holding. So even a five turn reload time wouldn't be bad. Six to nine, six hundred meters. The Imperial Long Guns would be pretty good. They're not that expensive. What kind of sails I got now? Extra speed. I should get some Cotton Weave sails also. I mean, a lot of this stuff is really expensive. But some cotton weave sails, some imperial long guns, and a deer and hull treatment. Those are things I could afford for my ship, like right now. Welcome back, Jen. How you doing? I really want to get that Voyager ship, though. Twitch on the phone is the worst? Yeah, I've never watched Twitch on my phone. It always seemed like it wouldn't really be worth it. Isn't there some better lanterns? Let's go to the, Let's go to it from here. Oh yeah, but the arcane lanterns are expensive. The anchor is expensive, the helm is expensive. But we could get some cotton weave sails. Our current sails are just jank ass sails. You mostly only do phone twitch, it sucks. That does suck. You know what's awesome? Watching twitch on like a big screen. Like one that might be attached to a computer or something. That's typically my twitch experience. And by typically I mean 100% of the time. Why are there 34 of these? Like, am I going to buy, seriously, 34 sales? So 
now that increases my speed I mean, yeah, this double bronzer does more damage, but it's got significantly longer reload time and it's got significantly shorter range. You don't want watch people watching me on a big screen when I stream. It freaks you out a bit. Well, I mean, I think a good number of people do watch Twitch in such a way, I don't... That's always my assumption. Like, I always assume everybody's watching on a big screen, but of course that's probably a stupid assumption since most people do everything on their mobile devices these days. Or maybe on a, a tablet or something. I don't know. I don't have a tablet. I have a smartphone. But I don't really watch things on it. Like, even if I'm out and about, and I have my phone with me. I'll just like read a I'll just like read a book on my phone. I don't really like try to watch videos on it or streams. Can't see a damn thing most of the time. It's pretty funny. I mean, not funny, haha. -ha. Back for more, are you? We're back down to like 5k, but I could sell these other cannons. Sixty-five hull. Better cannons, better sails. We might not have gotten a new ship, but we've upgraded this one in such a way that uh, plus ten. Hey, Chatupac! It's given us a ten percent boost to our travel speed. Not nice of him. Good job, Chatupac. I'm glad I rescued you. Milk! Does the body good. We have milk. Back for more, are ya? Haven't had enough of old Zamar yet. Whirring his beard for with one hand, he gestures for you to speak with the other. Having trouble with a client. Aye. Captain Redora hasn't paid me for her commissioned firepower. Samar pulls at the end of his beard and winces. While I'm up to my nose in debt, the wild mare gobbles up her coin. Yeah, I saw her in there. Well, less goblin in there than you'd think. <laughs> and now, pirates are holding my feet to the fire over some sham of a deal. Samar winces and hugged and tugs harder on his beard in self-administered punishment. Okay, so this guy's beard is like Durant's staff. If I don't get Redora's payment, I might as well start carving my swallonet. I don't know what a swallonet is, but okay. Um Oh, I could have gotten a discount from him before I bought all that shit. Hold on. Dude, if I can get a discount from this guy from by doing his quest, I should definitely get said discount before I buy a whole bunch of ship stuff from him. 
So what I'll do is do his quest first, see if he gives me a discount, and if not, then I'll just buy that stuff. We found milk, but unfortunately it's not from a cow, it's from a goat, as it says in the description. I don't know, I think you were sleepy cow last night, Knox, but I did find a pile of hay. It even had a description that said it was hay. The only problem is it was soaked with piss, so that was pretty disappointing. Don't think you would have cared for that too much. Fox <laughs> is like, yay, hey! And then after that, ah, really unhappy face. That's a terrible hay pins, piss and stance. Oh no. Hay piss and stance. That's a terrible pun, man. A terrible. Terrible. Be with you in just a. <sighs> Came in on the sloop. I can hammer your ship together if you're apt to pay me for it. Having trouble with a client. Uh, yes, I'm he is. Less, go and now, less goblin than you think. Medora's payment. I might as well start carving my swallonet. What's a swallonet? Why is there no mouse over telling me what it is? What kind of deal are these pirates offering? One where I am in principy ships and no others. Zamar pulls his hair back from his face with both hands, but it only returns to its tangled configuration. Bastards are driving away business until I give in. Why haven't you settled your differences already? Because I've got a backlog of work through the next turning of the wheel. Seems like a long time. And I'm old, damn it. These hips won't carry me to the mayor and back without a fight. In other words, we need to go to the wild mayor. Well, that's just fine and dandy. Mayor is a right popular place. There are worse favors I could ask. You know, I like the mayor. Um... If someone bought Redora's commission, would that solve your money's problems? Aye, but only once she fesses up that she doesn't have the coin. Sifting among his beard, Zamar finds a black hair and plucks it out. Call me a fool for holding out hope. She's an old client and a friend. I hope you find a way out of this. Aye. Hope and a hammer are all I've got left. When all you've got are hope and a hammer, everything looks like a despair nail. I don't know. He shrugs and sighs at his workshop. Farewell. The shipwright's plight. Captain Redora owes money to Zamar the shipwright. Zamar's debts have left him vulnerable to a local pirate gang, and he seeks a way out of his troubles. One of Zamar's clients is late on delivering payment. Zamar asked me to track down Captain Redora at the Wild Mare in Queen's Berth and retrieve the coin she owes. If Redora can't pay for her commission, Zamar will make it available for purchase. Andra knows my ship needs every advantage it can get. Alright, I think we have fully explored Queen's Birth. So let's get to task here. We're gonna go talk to Re Captain Redora. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we hadn't quite fully explored because there's some loot over here we, we did not avail ourselves of. Ooh, Royal Huana clothing. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. Hey now. Pacific Islander Chief. That looks cool. I mean, it's too colorful and garish for my character, but it looks pretty cool. Let's make Aloth wear it. <laughs> With that hat, he looks absurd. Let's 
Royal clothing. Oh, it is actually worth some money. I was like, it's probably going to be worth like 20 fucking copper. It's actually worth 120. It's not bad. Why would I find that in a crate over... Aloth looks mad spoony with that on. With that and, and his hat. Uh, we're going back to the wild mare again. I can't just like casually... Go to the... Uh, 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 uh. No. I can't just pull up the map and just click on the thing and instantly go to the wild mare whenever I want. I would have to go to an actual, you know, road. At which point I might as well just run to the wild mare. I hope he'll give me a discount. That would be rad. Because then I could get a discount on ships. So instead of having to pay 20000 for that Voyager... You know, if it's like a... They say that Lara and Orso were fighting again. Differences to settle. Again? Iced. Keep those kids away from each other. Let's see if we can solve this situation with Captain Redora. Do not make me start fireballing fools right here in this tavern slash slash uh, brothel sort of. Excuse me, Spoonatrons. Captain Redora. Ado, you return. Zamar sent me to collect your debt. Merla, and he hired Mossul. Adora takes a shaky, shaky step back. Are you so drunk you think a brother of the Kongsualias would hire herself out as a thug? Sir, many of us have tumbled very far indeed from lofty heights. I pass no judgment. Siente, but you are too late to collect. She holds her palms and flinches at the blow that doesn't come. A gang in the northern alley stole every coin. I cannot hire a crew, much less repay Zamar. Adora slowly lowers her trembling hands. Why don't you tell me what happened? Wizard lights drew me like a moth to the alley north of the wild mare. Her eyes turned downcast. And the blow to the back of the head that followed, Merlite hurt. She touches a spot behind her ear and hisses. Then a wolf sat on my chest while a group of thugs went through my pockets. Dude, people do this all the time, and I do it too, or I have done it. Don't you think it's funny when somebody is like talking about having like received a, like a bump on the head or something? Or like that they've hurt themselves or anywhere, it doesn't have to be when they had a bruise anywhere on their body, they 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 like whenever they're telling the story of having like received it, they always like have to like touch it and push it like to remind themselves that it actually hurts. Like Yeah, it really hurts. Jabbing at it. Oh yeah, it does. I'm not lying. It actually does still in this moment. I'm glad I've reminded myself. People seem to do that all the time. A wolf. If I was from, from examinable plains. A wolf? Ah, it growled like a thunderstorm and drooled on my uniform. Redora pats a stain on her shoulder. I stumbled back here and traded all I had left for the comforts of the mare. Oh, I can finally fucking heal somebody. All this time I've got healing spells and you never get to use them in fucking dialogue because it's always like, Oh, you're hurt? Yeah, sucks to be you. If only there was a healer standing right here. I can finally cast a healing balm. She reflectively closes her eyes and sucks in breath as light from your fingers touches her scalp. 
Redora reaches behind her ear, this time wearing a grin. Belfeto, the gods smile on you. No sooner does she say it than her own smile falters. Complanca, but now I am sober again. <laughs> I made her sober. The alien appear for mercy. Zamar is having some pirate trouble. Could this gang be connected? If they wanted Zamar to thirst for coin, uh, it is possible. Botsos would regret it when I turn my cannons to their mast. Doesn't that mean dick? It does. It means dick. Redora raises her empty mug as the vow is struck. It sounds like my quarrel is with this gang. Farewell. When you got their leader, tell them Radora sent you. She raises her mug and winks. Alright. Cut purses ambushed Captain Radora and stole Zamar's coin. The thugs got the drop on her in the northern alleys of Queen's Birth. The leader of this pirate gang travels with a pet wolf. Let's go kill some pirates. Or some gangers, or some thugs, or whatever they are. Let's kill them. Presumably, they're in the northern alley. Where the street magician was. I'll show him some fucking street magic. Everybody line up for the show. Street magic's about to begin. Light of spring, son of the world, thou givest me life and purpose. There's the street magic going on. Where are these thugs at? Are they the gamblers? Or maybe I just have to ask somebody up here where they are. I wonder what happens when all the Audras dried up. I wish they were standing right next to these gunpowder barrels. That would be very convenient for me. Welcome back. Looking for anything specific? The selection is fine, but I'm looking for even better equipment. I assure you that everything I sell is well crafted. But I will admit I'm not quite the weaponsmith that Marihi is. Nor do I possess Uto's expertise with firearms. A smile wavers. Marihi, you can find in Periki's Overlook, the district to the north. Uto has a shop in the Brass Citadel, in the eastern part of Nekitaka. Oh well. Maybe Tiella has seen something. Apreta, what do you want? Tiella sniffs and eases back. Do you know anything about the local pirates hassling Zamar? Ak, if they are the same ones who robbed Radora blind. She drags her threadbare sleeve across her nose. The boss and his wolf sleep their fun off by day. But by night, he and his Botso friends keep to the alley, giving out bruises for coin. Everybody calls these guys dicks. He gestures off in the opposite direction. Thank you. Farewell. The leader of this pirate gang travels with a pet wolf. The gang sleeps by day and makes trouble in the alleys by night. If only we could somehow make it nighttime. Oh, but we can. Oh, but we can. 
Quick save. We're gonna wait for doo -doo 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 -doo, like midnight. Juanica still working hard. She gives no fucks about what time it is. Ah, oh, there they are. They are right by the gunpowder barrels. Oh, you guys are not going to like what happens next. So she asked him what he calls that trick, and he says the Consueli. Consueli is how you pronounce that. I found the miscreants responsible for Zamar's troubles. They've been haunting the alleys of Queen's Birth. A.K.A. The Rascals. There's something I can do? I well, don't see why not. You the one causing trouble in Cotter's neighborhood. The wolf at this man's side raises her hackles and growls. She shushes and pats her behind the ear. Wait, the wolf at this man's side raises her hackles and growls. He shushes and pats her behind the ears, all the while keeping his focus trained on you. Your smoke and mirror ghosts do not impress Kalezia, and they do not scare Cotter. Kalezia must be the wolf. A line of drool drips down between the wolf's bared teeth. Sorry, Valian names all sound the same to me. Which one is the pretty wolf? You'll know soon enough. Kata bears his teeth too at a dare. I can actually pull spirits from the in-between? I'm not here to cause trouble. No? Smart man, I'm Mika. What do you want? He tugs on his wolf's scruff and drags her back to his side. Nice wolf. Celestia is Kota's heart. She is his rage and his spirit. He pats her flank and smiles. Any chance you're the one shaking down Zamar? Zamar has money problems. Kota has solutions. The little man doesn't know how to count his coins. Kota heard a newcomer was talking with Zamar. His free hand moves toward the weapon slung on his belt. Tell the shipwright to accept Cotter's deal before he suffers another setback. How about I stitch your hide into sailcloth? Why are you shaking down Zamar? Zamar can keep Principi ships afloat. Cotter narrows his eyes. Cotter tires of seeing his family sailing derelict wrecks. Just give me Captain Medora's money and I'll leave you alone. The coin is gone, Aimika. Ale for Cotter's friends and food for Cotter's wolf. Makasita gets the rest. Family? Captain. He pats Kiletsia's flank and smiles toward the rest of the gang. I don't really want to say either of these things. Oh well, I guess we're attacking. How about I stitch your hide into sailcloth? Celetia, the throat! Kata releases his wolf and points at you. The rest of his mates take up their arms. Alright. Dun 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 Dun, 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 dun. You guys are gonna enjoy this. You're gonna enjoy this so much. Oh, did that hurt? I'm sorry. Street magic, motherfuckers! Dude, that just obliterated these fools. That was awesome. Blowing up multiple gunpowder barrels with a fireball and just annihilating the entire gang. That was good times. Did not even touch Adair.
so perfectly aimed and positioned. The pirate thugs have been dealt with, and they shouldn't bother Zamar any longer. And chippy clothing. Armor, pistols, potion of spirit shield, the Zada shells, a ring of brighter protection. I'm pleased to receive that. And a Principi hat. I shall. Return to Zamar. I'll return to Redora first. Five fortitude, five reflex, five will. Defenses are pretty strong. 84 will, that might be too high. That's the same as mine. I don't really want her to have that much will. To be honest. Too much will for you. Well, congratulations, Aloth. You get some defenses. Suppress affliction. Dude, that shit was incredible. Aloth cast fireball. Gunpowder barrel, gunpowder barrel, gunpowder barrel. The fireball itself... ...hits Kata and the thug and the pistolier. Then the gunpowder barrel kills Kata, the thug, the pistolier. The gunpowder barrel kills Cut Purse. The gunpowder barrel kills Wolf Companion. Gunpowder Barrel hits Kata for 106 damage. Damn. Straight up wrecked. Nothing, nothing going on here, Nekataka Guard. Ignore the sound of an enormous fucking explosion that just came from this alley. Don't worry about that. Also, the fire that we probably started. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. There was not the explosion of three giant barrels full of gunpowder being detonated by a magical fireball. Nothing happening down this way. Yes? Fireball. Extremely loud. Three gunpowder barrels blowing up. Even louder than extremely loud. Whatever's louder than extremely loud. Like, everybody in the whole fucking district would have heard that shit. It would have made such a giant flash, too. People up on- way up on the hill in the fucking Royal Palace District would have seen that shit. Looks like a Michael Bay explosion. Who the fuck is Luca? I already forgot. Good news. Edo. Over the din we had fighting to the north. Redora raises her tankard to her lips and studies you over its rim. The pirate and his wolf are both dead. Belfetto for the republics. Redora tosses back her ale and turns to salute the rest of the wild mare patrons. Milanis. Okay, can we get a mouse over? We don't know what that. 
and to your health, Sere. I hope one day to stand again half so proudly beneath the flag. Zama is free to sell my commission. I must earn my way from the bottom. Goodbye. Well, she's pleased. I was like, I was hoping she would give me, I was gonna say, I was hoping she'd give me a little money after that, but then I realized, I remembered, she didn't have any money. That's the whole point. We still got the buffs. Hey, where is he? What are you doing, Zamar? Don't be goofing off. Don't be lollygagging. Don't be malingering. Ahoy there. Any news worth telling? The Principi won't be bothering you anymore. Best news I've heard since I arrived on this rock. Zamar lowers his hands. They shake like they don't know where to go next. They go back up to his beard, this time less frenzied. What of Captain Rodora? Samar pulls the end of his mustache taut. Has she sobered up yet? Or do we need to shake her by her ankles? She was robbed. Don't hold it against her. Robbed? Abidon's fist! Blinking, Zamar glances past you and swallows. Someone's feeling bold to prey on a captain in Queen's birth. Matters being what they are. Redora's commission is yours, if you can afford it. Samara smooths down his mustache and dislodges a small puff of sawdust. I might be interested in buying Redora's commission. That'll be the Iron Thunderer. A cannon well deserved of her name. Samara beams with pride. Maybe she doesn't stand up to Rawatai standards, but she's got heart. Oh boy. She's got heart. That's what I need in a naval battle. Heart in my cannon. For a thousand pyres, she'll crack a hull, scour a sail, or splinter a deck like an imp with something to prove. This is my reward for helping you. A thousand is plenty less than I offered the seasoned captain. One of Zamar's bushy eyebrows rises over the My other. My hands are tied. Sorry. I'll take it. You, you will? I, I mean, you will. He snatches your hand and shakes it with two quick pumps. Your vessel will spit fire like a worm with a belly full of fire kelp. Oh, he gave me four of them. Four cannons for a thousand. Okay, now, now we're talking. He snaps his fingers at one of his attendants and points at your ship. Farewell. I think those are pretty good. The 200 to 500, so they got further range than the hog noses. They do six to nine. Six to nine and four turns. How do I like those compared to the long guns that I was gonna buy? The long guns I was gonna buy, three to six, six turns, six to nine. Three to six, six turns, six to nine. Okay, so these these are same damage, but much quicker reload time, and they're just a little bit shorter range. And they were a lot cheaper, so yeah, I'll, I'll use the Iron Thunderers for now. 
What's up, Sin? How you doing? Welcome. Oh, thanks for the host. Thanks for the host, Sin. Appreciate that. What's going on with you? Have you been playing? Have you been playing this game today too? I think I saw you streaming it earlier. Got some Iron Thunderers. Just finished for night. You're probably way past me by now. I don't think I get a discount though. Come take a look. I do get a discount. Now is that the actual port shop? It is. Okay, so now I could get the Voyager for eighteen thousand. Took eight hours to do Preaking Serpent Kraut area. Still gotta explore the other area. I haven't even like I've been to the Serpent's Crown. Just to go to the Royal Palace, but I haven't done anything else there. I haven't done anything in Parikis except walk through it. I've done a little bit of stuff in the gullet, but not... Not that much. And I haven't even been to the Sacred Stair. I guess I have been to the Sacred Stair, technically, but I don't remember ever going there. And I haven't been to the Brass Citadel. And I haven't explored very much of the sea, but I did finish, um... Deadlight fort or whatever it's called. I did finish that. Business comes and goes like oh. And I got a spyglass. All right, I'm going to get An Adiran Hull treatment. A cotton weave sail. And that's it. Yeah, it is way more interesting than Defiance Bay, huh? That's what I was thinking too. And I can sell those other cannons. Ah, and I can sell the loot from the... ...from those dudes that I killed. I've got 7,300, and I've got some upgrades for my ship, and I got the spyglass, so I'm doing okay. You just got Palagina and Maya? Oh, nice. I have Maya, she's on my ship. I have Seraph, and he's on my ship. I got Palagina, but I do not yet have the guy that's wherever he is. Um, the druid companion, Takehu. I don't have him yet. I haven't met him yet. I know where he is. Somebody told me where he was. The prince, I think, told me that he's in the Water Shapers Guild, I think you said. But I haven't actually been there. And I have so many dogs. I have, like, seriously, I have a ton of different dogs. Crazy all the dogs I got. And now I'm using Sopnawa. Oh, thanks for the host, Brad. Appreciate that, my friend. I didn't need another druid, but I got him too. Yeah, I don't want a druid at all. This is my team that I want to use for the whole game. I don't want to use anybody else unless I have to for like one quest. Aloth, Shodi, Palagina, Adair. I have her as a paladin and a chanter. I have him as a single class fighter, I have her as a single class cleric, I have him as a single class wizard, and I am a cypher priest. Cypher cleric. No, not, not cleric, priest. She's a priest. I'm a multi-class priest cypher. He's a wizard. She's a paladin chanter. And he's a fighter. He's my tank. 
She's like melee DPS. She's the heals and buffs. I'm kind of all kinds of weird utility, mostly debuffs. I mostly charm enemies and do other weird shit. And Aloth is DPS, of course. There's a pet shop? I haven't even found that yet. I haven't even found a pet shop yet. I didn't like Maya. Business comes and goes like the tide. All right. Indeed. We're now done with Queen's birth. Finally, um, we're gonna go the next we have so many quests man You probably have a shit ton of quests too. look how many quests I got even if I get rid of completed. I have so many You know, I think I want to go sailing Now that I've completed one part of the city. I'm gonna go do a couple quests outside of the city I'm gonna go do Mariel the Mad and be a Kara and uh, explore this other uncharted island. I'm gonna go do those three side quests. I feel like I feel like getting out of the city. We've been in the city for a long time. Dares fighter, Palagina as paladin, Cody priest, and Maya as geomancer. Oh yeah, I forgot that she can be something that's not just a ranger. What is a geomancer? Like a ranger wizard or something? I just made her a single class ranger, and I just made Seraphin a single class barbarian. Because I'm already a Cypher, so I didn't need him to be a Cypher. do more projectiles as he levels up. That's awesome. Alright. How are we doing on food for the boat? Well, our morale is 90. Everything here is maxed out. We've got 60 rice and 73 ale before we start feeding him crappy stuff. And we've also got some, like, a fair amount of plus one stuff, too. I 
I might buy a little more rice. Paladin's powers look so OP when I respect Palagina. Dude, Paladins are supposed to are really fucking good in this. When I was watching all those videos before the game came out about like different builds and stuff, like so many really good multi-class builds involve Paladin as one of the things. It's like the best class to multi-class with like anything else. A Paladin Wizard is amazing, a Paladin Rogue is amazing, a Paladin Fighter is amazing, a Paladin... Uh, what was the other one that I saw that was really good? Paladin Monk? Ah, oh, miss it from Captive Aldis. Interesting. Wine and gunpowder scented letter. So, you had a little run in with Ben, and then you dragged it to my doorstep. You could have wiped your feet before you stomped in, but I digress. I know what you did, and I know who you are. And unlike my unfortunately block headed second in command, I recognize a threat when it smacks me upside the head. So, this is me, Captain Aeldis, commander of the God's Damned New Blood Principi, leader of the second largest fleet of pirates in the God's fucking Deadfire, inviting you, a terrifyingly powerful and strange watcher, to come and meet with me under the strictest parlay at Fort Deadlight. Which is to say, I promise not to gut you when you arrive for dinner and drinks. Looking forward to having a little hearthside chat. I would like to offer you a partnership of the most glorious and goriest variety. I scratch your back, you gut my enemies from hip to jaw, we laugh at their deaths over a bottle of the finest rum. Oh, and when you come, bring some candied nuts. Your newest and dearest friend, Aeldis. P.S. This is not a trap. Sure it's not. It's they always say. All right, uh, let's get some rice. I wish they sold ale. I'm gonna buy some rice. Fifty rice. So we'll be good on food for a while. We're eating, we're drinking 12 per day and eating 10 per day. So we're really going to need more ale. But, it'll be fine. Before we go to water, we can... We do have some lager and some grog. Hmm. Not the best, not the best options. Your crew are dining like kings compared to yours? Well, my crew's already pretty happy. I've got their morale up to 90, so I don't want to keep giving them good shit. Hey, Biakara. There's a bounty for her. I'm supposed to fight her. Yeah. Well, that's convenient that she brought herself to me. Let's, uh, quick save. We're about to have a naval battle right here. She's got 80 shot, 50 hull, 25 sails, 6 out of 12 crew. She's a level 7 druid, I think? Whatever. Let's do this. Makes no attempt to hail you. Alright, what was the good range on my cannons? I think it was up to 500. So, I'm in range right now.
Ah, oh, they turned away from me. They're get they're moving away from me. Oh, they've got the kind of ship that they're backing that aft up, Nox. They are literally backing that aft up. So they can shoot me with their Iron Thunderer from their rear cannon. Chain shot. Oh, I'm fucking their sails up. They're not going to be doing much maneuvering soon. They fired their they fired their aft cannon at me and did some damage to my sails. Oh, now they're out of range for me, though. Well, what happens if I try to fire anyway now? Oh, my chances aren't great. But if I can just take out their sails... Two misses. That's unfortunate. Alright, I need to... What happens if I go full speed ahead? Now it's coming back toward me. Spyglass! Ow, that was a lot of damage to my hull. How do I get up alongside them? I don't- I don't know how to get up alongside them. If they're- if they have their back to me... Nah, they just got away from me again. I'm trying to get closer. They're faster than I am. Need to get off some shots on them. Now's my shot. Now's my chance. Let's wreck their sails. Yeah, they got no sails left. See, this is what's confusing. Like, you would think I would be able to go off a bunch to the side and then come at them fr 
from like an angle where they couldn't shoot me and like get alongside them or something. But it doesn't seem like there's really any way to do that. Attacking their sails was kind of pointless. I'm just going to try to attack them. Let's board. Should I board? Yeah, I wouldn't have caught up to them if I didn't destroy the cells. That's that's true. Should I board or ram? Does ramming kill some of their people and make it easier during the ship to ship fight? Fuck it, let's ram. Hashtag ram the pillar. Sending shards of wood and enemy sailors flying. I don't know if we can win this fight. It might be really tough. They got a lot of people over there. Alright, who do we have? We have Maya. We have my team. We have Seraphin. We have Constantin and Nia. They have a whole shit ton of dudes. Oh my god, they all just jumped over here. Okay, we're gonna be in big trouble here. I need to dominate one of these dudes right away. 60%, 66, 82, 76, 76, 82. Now I'm paralyzed. It's not like that's not good. Is Shoddy paralyzed? Doesn't look like it. How long am I paralyzed for? Okay, just as, just barely any time at all. Who can I charm? Let's try to charm their leader. Okay, we're kind of kicking their ass, actually. I don't really need to do anything. Okay, 
Dude, we destroyed them. Oh, Biakara's still charmed. I'm like, why did we stop fighting and the battle's still going on? Take that loot! Alright, well, that turned out to be way easier than I thought it was going to be. We gained 10 morale. Crew gained experience. I gained a rank as captain. Mother Sharp rank gained a rank. Eld, Eld, Eldgrim, Eld Angrim gained a level and a rank. Our ogre cook gained a rank! And the pale elf guy gained a level and a rank. We don't need to share measured coins with crew because their morale's already maxed. We got some Huana colors. These are the colors of the Huana, which wear the bear the Wayfinder's emblem. Bunch of Azada shells, baby pearls. Small immature pearls are frequently recovered by Huana oyster divers. While not as valuable as mature pearls, they are still used as currency throughout the dead fire. Saw the shell strings, a bunch of hagfish, mariners, grog, water, an iron thunderer, some fine leather armor, and a lance of the midwood stag. We'll check that out in a second. I have a I have a Zareb too, Sin. She's one of my deckhands. I didn't make the I didn't make the um Zareb my cook because I already have an ogre for my cook. Biakara's bounty is mine to claim. I can return to Aenea outside of the Valian Trading Company headquarters at Queen's Birth in Nekataka to collect my reward. So let's see. She's now a seasoned deckhand. He's an expert deckhand. She's a seasoned cannoneer. He's a seasoned cannoneer. He's a seasoned helmsman, seasoned surgeon, seasoned cook, and novice navigator. But he didn't start off as any kind of navigator at all, so that's pretty good. And we got the Triumph of Biakara. Your name never sings boat shanties? I think if you go to um, settings and you go to sound, there's a little checkbox right here for sea shanties. So make sure that's checked. Lance of the Midwood Stag. The people of Midwood had long told tales of the aggressive wildlife that inhabited the forest. When woodsmen and hunters began to come under frequent attack by animals near the villages, a master huntsman was elected to investigate. The one consistency in the accounts of the attacks was the presence of a giant white stag. The huntsman set out to locate and fell the creature, hoping it would end the assaults. After a month in the woods, the huntsman emerged. He was near death, bleeding from multiple wounds. He was badly broken as well, as though trampled by a great beast. In his hands, so he had a hard time with, with uh, casually striding elk. In his hands, he carried a freshly passioned pike made of antlers. He died before reaching the village and told no tales of the hunt before breathing his last. However, after his passing, the attacks in the forest ceased completely. So it's a pike. It does 26 to 35 damage, 9 penetration, because it's exceptional. And it has increased reach. And it gives you wood skin when you first become bloodied. Huh. That's pretty cool. And you can make it... 
have Grant Lord of the Forest. Plus three to all power levels. And when you're knocked out, all allies get wood skin. Pretty fucking cool. The only person who would potentially use that would be Palagina. Now she has proficiency with Greatsword. But there's nothing that says she couldn't get proficiency with Pike. If she used this, her damage would go up, her accuracy would go up, her penetration would go up, her reach would go up, and she'd get this special power. 27 to 36. 37. Twenty-seven to thirty-six, fifty-five and nine. Well, this is clearly superior for her. Put a great sword as her secondary weapon. This is clearly superior for her. He made her Polax in Greatsword. Even though she doesn't have a proficiency with it. It's still going to be much better. Still a two-handed weapon, so she gets that benefit. She could take the, um... Yeah, I think Paladin Fighter would be an amazing... You could build an amazing DPS guy or an amazing tank with that. Paladin Fighter. I almost wanted to be a Paladin Fighter, but the only reason I didn't... Is because I'm planning to play a single class paladin in Pathfinder Kingmaker, so I didn't want to just play a paladin in both games. That's supposed to be coming out later this year, and it looks really, really good. Oh, that doesn't help her now, though. Misses to grazes with proficient weapons. She's not proficient with the lance. You haven't heard of Pathfinder Kingmaker? Oh, you should look it up, dude. It looks so good. It's based on the Pathfinder rules. It's basically a lot like this game, except it's based on Pathfinder. No, it doesn't play like a board game, it plays like this. Real time with pause, combat. Rock Stomper Rodul, I don't want to mess with him. So I've got to repair my sails and my hull. My morale's maxed out, so I don't need to... You know what, if my morale's maxed out, I think I'll feed them some crappy stuff for a little bit. Go ahead and lose a little morale. None of my people got hurt, right? 
No. No, it's not co-op. Single player, just like this game. But yeah, you get to build your own barony. And like, rule over it. And build a city and stuff like that. As well as doing normal adventures like you do in this game. Um... I want to... Dude, his deflection is getting really fucking good. How do I... How do I go to the deck of my ship? I click on that. I want to talk to my people. Oh no, the game crashed. Except it was a different kind of crash. Because OBS didn't crash this time. I'm still streaming. Alright, I'm going to take a super fast uh, break for a couple minutes then. So that's a good time to end the episode for YouTube. If you're watching the stream, don't go anywhere because I'm not done streaming. If you're watching on YouTube, this episode is now over. So thank you for watching. This has been Josiah Plays Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire.